Now, with all the stories making the headlines this Good Friday, it's the ITV News at 10. The leader of Northern Ireland's Democratic Unionist Party resigns after being charged with historical sexual offences. Sir Geoffrey Donaldson's departure could have huge implications for the government instalment just weeks after power sharing was restored. I think it's been a devastating revelation and has caused tremendous shock, not just for myself personally or my colleagues within the DUP, but for the community right across Northern Ireland. It came as a great shock. Also tonight, counter-terror police launch an investigation after an Iranian journalist is stabbed outside his London home. A former sub-postmaster tells of his outrage after ITV News obtains a recording of a meeting where the ex-post office boss was told about problems with Horizon. And... Hi, Chief Kingdom. Lewis Rizamit here. Just signed. Can't wait to go and see you all at Arrowhead. The Welsh rugby wizard hoping to make magic in Kansas after securing a three-year deal with back-to-back -back Super Bowl champions. This is ITV News with Gamal Van Bilet. Good evening. Sir Geoffrey Donaldson, the leader of Northern Ireland's Democratic Unionist Party, has quit the role just hours after being charged with historical sexual offences. The new interim leader tonight said the news was a devastating revelation for the party. There are already some recent questions of what impact it may have on the power-sharing government at Stormont. Ian Woods reports. The resignation was sudden and unexpected. It comes just two months after arguably the most significant moment of Sir Geoffrey Donaldson's political career, when he persuaded his reluctant party to end their boycott of Stormont and return to sharing power with Sinn Féin. He's only been the leader of the Democratic Unionist Party for three years, but he's been an MP for a quarter of a century and came to prominence by opposing the Good Friday Agreement. That's what we think of the framework document. <laughs> Overnight, his social media accounts vanished, and at lunchtime, the DUP confirmed he'd resigned after being charged by the police. The allegations are of a sexual nature, and he'll appear in court next month alongside a woman who's accused of aiding and abetting the alleged offences. The party has suspended his membership and moved quickly to appoint one of his supporters as interim party leader. I think it's been a devastating revelation and has caused tremendous shock, not just for myself personally or my colleagues within the DUP, but for the community right across Northern Ireland, it came as a great shock. Um, but we are a party and individuals that believe in justice. It is important that none of us say anything or act in any way uh, that would seek to prejudice what is now an ongoing criminal investigation. The Northern Ireland Assembly for the Sir Geoffrey opted to stay as a Westminster MP rather than serve as a member of the Northern Ireland Assembly. So in theory, the resignation shouldn't impact power sharing. But Stormont deals are often fragile. One of his allies, Emma Little Pengelly, became the Deputy First Minister. She has formed a working partnership with Sinn Fein's Michelle O'Neill. But many in the DUP opposed the newly negotiated post Brexit arrangements. And a leadership contest could reopen that debate. Ian Woods, ITV News. Counter terror police are tonight's leading an investigation into an attack on an Iranian journalist working in London. Puri Azarati worked for the channel Iran International and had previously reported on anti-government protests in Iran. Well, David Wood is here. Um, David, what more do we know about this attack and possible motive? So the attack happened at around quarter to three this afternoon. Police were initially called to uh, the Wimbledon, uh, Wimbledon in southwest London to a man in his 30s with injuries to his leg. Now, he is in hospital, but his condition is not thought to be life-threatening. The channel that he works for, Iran International, confirmed then that it was uh, Puria Zarati. And this is why anti-terrorism police are now leading this investigation, because he, and indeed other reporters on the channel have reported 
on uh, stories that are critical of the Iranian regime. Back in 2002, as revealed by uh, ITV News, there was a plot by the Iranian regime to kill two prominent presenters on the channel. The threat was deemed uh, so risky that for a time there were armed police stationed outside the channel's London studios. Now, back to this investigation, police stress is still at a very early stage. They're not jumping to any conclusions. They are working with uh, the channel and they have a number of lines of inquiry, but simply they do not know the reason for the attack at this stage. They also say at the moment, at least in this early stage of the investigation, there have been no arrests made. OK, David, thanks for the update. A former sub-postmaster prosecuted over the Horizon Post Office scandal says he is shocked and devastated after ITV News was given audio of the meeting where the former chief executive was told of problems with the computer system. During the meeting with independent investigators from Second Sight in 2013, they warned the post office not to cover up the problems. Martha Fairley reports. For years, the post office denied there was an issue with its Horizon software, only admitting in 2019 that Fujitsu workers at their headquarters in Bracknell could access sub-postmasters' accounts remotely. But we now know post office chief executive Paula Venels was told in 2013, during a meeting secretly recorded with Ron Warmington and Ian Henderson from Second Sight Forensic Accountants. Just to let you know, Paula has now joined us. Hi, Ian. Yeah, hi, Paula. Hi, Paula. Hi, Ron. In the meeting, they warn against any public denial that remote access is possible. The last thing you want is a, a, a spot review response that says, categorically, there was no access to live data from Bracknell if, in a week's time, some bloody whistleblower pipes up to say, well, actually, I was working on the second floor and we routinely did X. Former sub-postmaster VJ Parrick was sentenced to 18 months after being wrongly convicted of stealing £78,000. Shocked and devastated, to tell you the truth. They have uh, ruined my life and the sub-postmasters for 900 of them. And it's just uh, taken too long now to get to the bottom of this. In 2015, Paula Venels told a committee of MPs she knew of no miscarriages of justice. They spent £100 million of taxpayers' money uh, to defend a case which uh, was mainly, the main arguments for their defence was that this couldn't be a system that would be, could be remotely accessed. So they knew uh, before that, but prepared to use that tsunami of cash basically to stop uh, the truth coming out. Former post office boss Paula Venels has not responded. The post office and accountants in the secret recordings say they can't comment due to the ongoing public inquiry. Martha Fairley, ITV News. The Prime Minister has been accused of cronyism after a major party donor was given a knighthood. Businessman Mohammed Mansour donated £5 million to the Conservative Party last year and is a senior treasurer at the party. Every year, tens of thousands of pets go missing and many never come home. Now to help, a database is to be set up to help reunite them with their owners. But as Amy Lewis explains, it relies on more of us getting our pets microchipped. 5,000 dogs and cats end up at Battersea's Rescue Centre every year. Many are abandoned, but some are pets who cannot be reunited with their owners because they haven't been microchipped. We receive over a thousand animal missing reports each year and um, it's very distressing for those owners. There are 18 million pet dogs and cats in England. There has been a 40% increase in the number of strays in the past year. The RSPCA say that's partly down to the cost of living crisis. 80% of them don't have the right microchip details, so fewer are being reunited with their owners. A new system is being introduced to change that. A new central database has been established and for the first time it means that vets, charities and police can share information about who owns a pet. The changes should also reduce the number of pets that are stolen in the future. By law, all pet dogs must already be microchipped and from June it will be the same for cats. The aim is for fewer pets to end up at places like Battersea and instead be where they belong. Amy Lewis, ITV News. 
American actor Lewis Gossett Jr. has been hailed for paving the way for black actors following his death at the age of 87. Be proud of them wings. They're the only ones you're going to leave here with. Mayonnaise. Mr. Gossett became the first African American to win the Best Supporting Actor Academy Award in 1982 for his role in An Officer and a Gentleman. Gossett also won an Emmy in 1978 for his role in the groundbreaking series Roots. Gossett's last role was in the 2023 remake of The Color Purple. Finally, when the rising star of Welsh rugby Lewis Rees Zamet announced he was quitting the game and moving to America in a bid to make it big in the NFL, it caused shockwaves. Now, just 10 weeks later, he's landed a lucrative three-year contract with one of the biggest sides in the league, the back-to-back -back Super Bowl champions, the Kansas City Chiefs, as Chris Scudder now reports. This was what the man they're calling Reese Lightning had been dreaming of, signing a contract for the back-to-back -back Super Bowl champions, the Kansas City Chiefs. Hi, Chiefs Kingdom. Lewis Rees Amit here. Just signed. Can't wait to go and see you all at Arrowhead. It's been a fairy tale rise played out at breakneck speed. Race lightning. Less than three months ago, Lewis Rees Samit sent shockwaves through Wales by announcing he was quitting rugby on the eve of the Six Nations to chance his arm in one of the toughest sporting arenas in the world. But there were no guarantees the 23-year-old had to battle his way through the NFL's training school for overseas hopefuls, the international player pathway. I think the hardest challenge is probably my body's obviously not used to running full, full pace and then trying to, you know, stop. At the end of the day, all of us want to play in the NFL. And if we can help one of the boys do that, then that's going to be extra special. And now he's done it, catching the eye of the most glamorous team of the lot, the Super Bowl champions, the Kansas City Chiefs, which means the lightning-quick former wing really could be a Swifty rubbing shoulders with Taylor Swift and her Chiefs boyfriend, Travis Kelsey, along with American football's star quarterback, Patrick Mahomes. This would be a really big deal. They are one of the best teams overall. He would most likely play in preseason. Now this happens towards the end of July and it's the few weeks that lead up to the start of the season. But this is a great opportunity to get those second, third, fourth string guys onto the field. We saw it in the past with Christian Wade. He took off and had a really big highlight play. So this could be the same opportunity for Louis Reese Dammit. Using his speed and ball catching ability, the former rugby poster boy could turn into a running back or wide receiver, or maybe still not make it onto the field at all. But he's passed the first test, ready for liftoff, then touchdown with American football's jet set. Chris Scudder, ITV News. And uh, that is it for tonight. The national weather is next, but from everyone here, Enjoy your weekend. A very good night. Bye bye. Today, it could be pouring in many places, but not for a little while. Heinz Tomato Ketchup sponsors ITV National Weather. Hello there, very